This is a lesson on motion under constant velocity in the kinematics unit. Motion under constant velocity can be described by a single equation. And because it's constant velocity, it will have the equation of a line where slope equals um, m and the equation is y equals mx plus b. The slope in this situation will be the velocity. The velocity is constant, which results in a constant slope. So the position will be the initial position plus any distance you moved at that con constant velocity represented by vt. Okay, this can, equation can easily be derived by the definition of velocity up here, and I put that up here. If you rearrange this e equation, you can get the second equation here. The final position equals the initial plus vt. This is a vector equation, so make sure you're aware of the signs that you put in there. If the velocity is in the negative direction or if the position is in the negative direction, that those are important factors. And what we're going to note is if we wanted to write the position as a function of time, just like the equation of a line, I can have the position as a function of time, and I can graph that equation. So in our lesson today, we're going to look at how to create equations with this position for, as a function of time, and also calculate velocities or positions based on these equations. The first example I picked out is a simple graph of two regions. As we're looking at this graph, we can notice that the horizontal is time in hours. The vertical axis is x in miles. And so when I think about the speed or velocity here, I'm going to have miles per hour. That would be our units for that. We can see that um, whatever's going on, uh, it goes three miles in a half hour, steady rate, and then goes backwards three miles in half an hour at a steady rate. So it says determine the velocity for each region, and I put the velocity equation up here. So if I want the velocity for region one, I will have to look at the displacement in region one and the time in region one. Well, let's write some points out here. We can do that on our graph. Um, 0 0.5 comma three, and then down here, we will have one comma zero. So in the v region one, we can see that it moved three miles. The displacement is a plus three miles in half an hour. So when I divide three by 0.5, that will give me six miles per hour. I'm just gonna write it like that. I'm gonna put a plus there because this is a vector and I need to indicate direction. I can do the same for the second region, V2. Well, when I look at V2, the final is zero and the initial is three. So when I go final minus initial, I get zero minus three. I move backwards three miles in half an hour. And so my velocity becomes six miles per hour with a negative sign. So it's the same speed. And no, you may notice that about the slope. One has a positive slope and the other has a negative slope and uh, they are constant throughout that. And so that's the, the slope of those. What is the equation of the motion for each position? Portion, sorry, portion. What is the equation of motion for each portion? So what we want to do is write the equation that represents this red line and the equation that represents this blue line. So the position in region one as a function of time, well, we can follow this general equation up here, the general form, says take the initial position. Well, for the red part, the initial position was zero. And um, add on vt, okay, so then plus six t. I don't need the zero in there, but I'm just gonna leave it in there because it was sort of filling in those parts and we can recognize that it's zero. So there's the equation of motion for that first one. That's the equation of that line. The second equation is a little bit different because it doesn't start at time equals zero. It starts at time equals 0.5. So you could write the equation like this. Um, the initial position we could say is three. 
uh, its velocity is negative six. We already know that's negative six. And the time it's tra the time that the object traveled this is t minus 0 0.5. T minus 0 0.5. It doesn't travel it for a whole hour. It travels it for only half an hour. So that's how I'm going to represent that line. The first half hour was for the fir first part of that motion. And that's sort of how you take that away, how you consider that. To simplify this, the appropriate thing to do would be to simplify this. So we get 3 minus 6t plus... 3, which is 6 minus 6t. So the right thing for us to do when we get these two equations is to graph them in a graphing calculator and see if that matches our original graph. And if so, then we're good to go. So let's go ahead and graph these. I'm going to go ahead and put in the first equation. It is, I'm going to put it in terms of x and y, even though it's x and t um, in there. And I'm also going to limit it. We really want to limit it to the time period where um, it's between 0 and half an hour. So there's that line. Uh, the scales are a little different between the two graphs. That's fine. I'm fine with that. But we can see that goes 3 miles in half an hour. The second part of the graph, let's go ahead and put in this equation. y equals 6 minus 6x. OK, they're connecting up. And then I want to limit it from the second half hour to one hour. And so we can see that this graph matches the original graph other than scale. And so uh, our equations check out. And that's a good way to make a, a confident decision about your equations, if they're correct or not, is to go ahead and graph them. Okay. The next part of this problem asks us to graph the velocity versus time and the speed versus time. Here's the position graph. Right, the position graph, and I made two slots for this: the velocity versus time, ver and the speed versus time. Well, we already calculated velocity versus the velocities for each time period. The velocity for the first half hour was a positive six miles per hour, and can I I can write that it's a flat line, right? The velocity was a constant six miles per hour the whole time. After the first half hour, though, it decreased and went down to negative 6 miles per hour. And so when I graph velo the velocity versus time, I can see the slopes are represented in the signs in the velocity versus time graph. You may already have an idea that when I look at the velocity, the speed versus time, that's different than the velocity. The speed is just the absolute value of the velocity. So, and in this case, we don't have to worry about turning forward or backwards. The speed for the first part is six miles per hour, and the speed for the second part is six miles per hour. Both, they go three miles in half an hour. And so it goes the constant speed the whole time, but the velocity is different. When we look at constant velocity and we have an equation of motion for position versus time, we can think about two objects intersecting. And this is the case of intersecting lines. So in algebra, you have already covered this in precalculus. I, when we're doing intersecting lines in 1D constant velocity, some strategies and tips here are uh, draw an initial sketch and identify what your knowns and unknowns are. And while you're doing that, assign meaningful symbols to them all, sort of arranging the information, taking the information in the problem, encoding it, and then drawing a different representation on the uh, picture, on the paper for yourself. And in this situation, you will set up a coordinate system. If we're dealing with velocity and position, we need to know positives and negatives and backwards and forwards. So make sure you have a coordinate system and assign where zero is. 
Make sure that you comprehend the setup well. Read every part of that problem. Missing small detail details can throw your understanding and your answer to the whole problem off, as well as your assumptions. A key thing to do when we're doing intersecting lines is to develop an equation of motion for each part, each object, so that you can have those equations to do algebra with. We're going to draw the graphs of each function. Make sure you're doing that, that you're drawing the graphs of each function because then you can see whether your lines make sense, that you develop the correct equations, and you can also observe their intersection point. This is very powerful when you're trying to solve algebraically and verify your answer on a graph. Algebraically solve for the intersection using the equations and draw the graphs to observe the point. So I picked out a pretty um, straightforward problem here, the ant and the ladybug, and uh, they will be intersecting. This. So th that will be our overall strategy, is that they are intersecting with constant speed, constant velocity. You're outside observing the motion of bugs on the ground. You see an ant heading straight towards a ladybug and wonder when they will meet. The ant's speed is 0 0.062 meters per second. The ladybug speed is 0 0.035 meters per second, and they begin 44 centimeters apart. So I'm already getting kind of a picture in, the he in my head. You see an ant, and it's there, and there's a ladybug and they're heading towards each other. And so I'm going to draw a velocity vector in here for both of them, 0 0.62 meters per second. And so you can see that the ant is heading this way. The ladybug is going slower. I'll have a shorter vector, and this is 0 0.035 meters per second. I'll call this the um, speed of the ladybug. And I will call this the speed of the ant. Notice that I'm assigning symbols, right? That was our trick. One thing I'm, another thing I'm gonna note in here is the distance they start, or the distance between them. Maybe I'll let the ant start at x equals zero, and the ladybug will start at 44 centimeters, which I'm gonna convert to meters right away. Notice that the speeds are in meters per second, so I'm going to convert that to um, meters as well. So there's 44 centimeters, or 0.44 meters, between them. Okay, And they're going to travel towards one another, and they're going to meet somewhere in the middle. And it seems like they're going to meet closer to the ladybug than the ant. The ant will be able to cover a lot of ground, and the ladybug won't be going as far, and they'll meet somewhere in between there. And so that's what um, it says, develop an equation of motion, motion for each bug, okay, and determine when and where they meet, and verify your answer with a graph. Okay, this is not a graph. This is a general sketch just to help set up the problem. We will actually get a graphing calculator out and graph the equations of motion. That's what you'll want to do. So let's get an equation of motion going for each bug. The equation of motion x of t equals x initial plus vt. So let's say the x of the ant, the position of the ant, well the ant starts at zero and it travels in with a positive velocity at 0 0.02, and I will put the t in there in order to fill out the equation of motion. And that will be the equation of motion for the ant. The equation of motion for the ladybug is going to be very, very similar. The ladybug starts at 0 0.44 meters. It's moving in the negative direction at a speed of 0 0.35. And then I will tack the t on there in order to make this an, uh, uh, an equation as a function of time. So that, those two are the equations of motion. When it talks about equation of motion, that's what they're talking about, is you can plug these in a graphing calculator. And um, we're going to hold off to do that. We can double check our answer. Develop an equation of motion, done. Determine when and where they meet. Okay, so when they meet, what I'm going to note is that the position of the ant is equal to the position of the ladybug. Pretty obvious, right? 
Well, that tells us mathematically what we need to do, too. We're going to have to set the position vector, the position equation for the ant equal to the position vector equation for the ladybug. So let's set these two things equal to each other. We get 0 0.062t equals 0 0.44 minus 0 0.035t. All right, we have a linear equation. We can go ahead and solve. I'm going to add 0.035t on both sides, 0.035t. The 0.44 stays on the one side by itself. And when I add these two up, I get 0.097. I can solve for t now. 0.44 divided by 0.097. And that turns out to be, when you run it through your calculator, 4.5361 seconds. You can round it according to significant figures. In this case, there will be two significant figures, and this would be uh, an official answer for that. It says, de determine when and where they meet. Where they meet. So how do we figure out where they meet? Not too hard. We have their position equations. We know where they are. After 4.5 seconds, I can figure out where the ant is. And after 4.5 seconds, I can figure out where the ladybug is. Let's go ahead and put it into the ant equation. 0.062t. Oops. 4.5361, you can just plug that in, just plug that in, times 0 0.62, and I get the position of the ant is 0 0.2812 meters. Or, alternatively, you could say that the ant traveled 28 centimeters. Overall, that means that the ladybug if this is 28 centimeters here, the ladybug would have traveled the difference between 44 and 28 in here. But that's where they meet is 28 centimeters from the initial position. And since I assigned a coordinate system, anyone looking at my work will know that that 28 centimeters is in reference to this point, And I've labeled it on here as well. Let's get the graphing calculator out and double check the answer. 4.5 and 28. Let's see if that's what happens. Let's get the calculator out. Uh, I'll put this equation in. Uh, the first one, the, f the ant travels at 0 0.062. Okay, there it is traveling along. Uh, and then the ladybug travels, let's put her, its equation in here, 40.44 minus 0.035x. And you can see that they meet here. Here's the two equations. It's good. Um, this one starts right where it's supposed to, 44. 4 centimeters is 0.44. This one starts down here at 0, 0. And they meet. And the, like I said, this is different than the picture we drew. This is the, on this axis here, this is time. And this is position. So after 4.5361, that's what we got, right? And 28 centimeters, we can see that they meet. So our graph verifies our work. You cannot just graph it and then write the answer down. You must do the algebra. You must show how you solved algebraically and derive the answer. Verify your answer with a graph.